In this video series, we look at Amazon Bedrock, which is a generative AI service from AWS. Uh, this is the landing page on the console. As you can see from here, they offer LLM models as well as image creation models from AI21 Labs. Uh, this is actually called I21 Labs, Amazon's own models, Anthropic, Cohere, and Stable Diffusion image models. On the UI, they also have a playground for creating a chat, text, and image related applications. Okay. But in this video series, uh, we build applications uh, through uh, Python SDK because that's how uh, we build applications, right? So this is for just uh, quick uh, testing and playing. All right. Um, so to use this service, uh, we just need uh, the Boto3, Boto Core, and AWS CLI uh, libraries, uh, which are standard AWS libraries to interact with AWS services via Python uh, SDK. Uh, we don't need a LangChain for this tutorial, uh, but we need these three uh, to be installed. And we also need an IAM account, uh, which has access to uh, the Bedrock services and the foundation models. Okay, uh, all right. So this one, it's just a code formatter. And here I'm importing a bunch of uh, very standard Python libraries, including Boto3. Now I provide the link in the uh, description below. Uh, the AWS Bedrock Workshop, they have provided a couple of helper functions. Uh, I'll show you in the form of these utilities. Okay, so if I go here, these are the two helper functions. So the first helper function, uh, which is uh, this get bedrock client, right? So this function, it simply create uh, the bedrock client and runtime uh, so that we can access the service. Okay, uh, it's a very simple function. And the second one, uh, it's another helper function uh, for just printing. Uh, so it print maximum 100 characters in a line so that when we generate the code or text, etc., we can see uh, uh, the full content, okay? So these are two simple helper functions. Uh, let me go back to my code. And maybe do full screen. Yeah, all right. So we are appending the library where we have these utility functions. And from those functions, uh, we are export, uh, sorry, importing uh, the bedrock as well as this print, um, uh, uh, modules or classes okay all right then uh, we get the bedrock client and uh, we need to uh, by default it create this runtime client so this bedrock runtime client uh, using which we can invoke the endpoints uh, if we disable this runtime uh, then we get the bedrock client uh, using which uh, we can do the rest of the standard operations like uh, uh, listing the models, uh, getting the metadata, uh, etc. Okay. Uh, it is very similar to SageMaker client and SageMaker runtime. So using SageMaker runtime, we can invoke the endpoints. But uh, the SageMaker client, uh, which has uh, many more operations like uh, 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 accessing the models, the pipelines, etc, uh, etc, et endpoints, etc. Okay. Now this service is not available yet in all the regions. Uh, I think it is available only in four regions. So you have to choose one of the regions where this model is uh, available. Okay, so I'm choosing a US East one, uh, even though I'm in AP Southeast uh, region. All right, so just calling this function, it will create these two clients. One is the standard bedrock client and the second one is the bedrock uh, runtime client. Okay, all right. Now we should be able to create these two using the standard Boto3 client by providing whether we want to access Bedrock or the Bedrock runtime service along with providing the region name and the endpoints, right? For some reason, this is not working. So I'm using the helper function provided by the AWS. All right. So using the client, the standard clients, for example, here, we can do a number of things. Uh, for example, let me show you. So if I do this, 
yeah so as you can see these are all the things uh, we can uh, uh, we can do right for example we can get these custom models uh, we can list the custom models foundation models uh, etc okay so here we are simply listing the custom models uh, this will be a dictionary of uh, lists and here we have the model summaries okay so for example this is one model i think up to this this is one model model arn yeah model arn yeah this is one model and here uh, we have another model uh, etc okay so it has all the details about these models can be fine tuned uh, 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 the arns etc but if we want to simply see the model ids so we are running the same uh, foundation models operation but this time uh, from this uh, output we are simply printing uh, the model id okay so we are printing the model id and these are all the foundation models uh, aws bedrock support so as you can see uh, there are amazon's own models called these titan models these are uh, language models and then uh, the stable diffusions image creation models so there are these two models and then uh, the i21 uh, language models anthropic as well as cohere uh, language models okay so we have language models from four services amazon i21 anthropic and cohere and we have image creation models uh, from stable diffusion okay uh, so in this exercise uh, we are going to analyze a simple csv file using python code uh, but we are not going to write the python code we will ask uh, an llm to create uh, the code for us okay so let's say we have a csv file uh, with these five columns right we have the date product id price and the number of units sold okay so that's the csv file so here we are creating the csv file uh, we have written it uh, as sales.csv file okay now we want to analyze this file so we have four questions to ask uh, for example for this given file we wanted to find out what is the total revenue for the year and we want to find out the product which has the highest revenue and the date on which we have the highest revenue and finally we want to create a visualization showing uh, the sales against the months okay so these are the four tasks we want to do and we will generate python code uh, for doing uh, these tasks okay so here we are creating a prompt uh, the human uh, that's we are giving the instructions you have a csv file here llm you have a csv file called sales.csv and it has these four columns it has date because date can uh, be different formats so here we are saying our date is in this uh, format so four letters for uh, year two letters for month and two letters for the date so our date is in this format now create a python program to analyze the sales data from a csv file okay and the program should be able to read the data and compute the following four uh, uh, things okay now we provide additional instructions because uh, this we are want to generate code which can run without any bugs and which is also a very succinct and we don't want uh, uh, unnecessary comments etc right so here we are providing a few uh, more instructions so ensure that the code is syntactically correct right bug free and optimized okay not span multiple lines unnecessarily and also we would like to use uh, the standard libraries for example the csv file uh, we can read using pandas but we want to use it using bare python uh, standard libraries right without installing additional libraries okay so return only the python code uh, without any summarizing text or explanation or context right if you want uh, we can ask for that uh, but as you know llms all have the uh, input and output prompt uh, limits as well as the cost depends on how many tokens we are generating okay all right uh, so we are going to use this cloud model from anthropic and uh, 
so we can provide a bunch of uh, uh, the parameters uh, to these LLMs, uh, as you probably know. So first we have the prompt data, uh, which is uh, which is what we define here, and the maximum tokens, uh, the output tokens. Okay, so maximum output tokens is four thousand. Now these three parameters are related to uh, how the text or the code is generated. So as you know, the LLMs they generate the next word one at a time with certain probability, right? They generate a bunch of words from which one word gets picked up. Now, which word get picks up, picked up is determined by these three parameters. Now, the focus of this video is not to go uh, into what these parameters are, but if we want to do a factual information retrieval, we will go with very low temperature. Whereas if you are doing some creative writing, we set the temperature to high value. And then this top P and K, they determine which value or which uh, word uh, gets picked up, okay, from the bunch of words generated. So P is related to the probability that cumulate to probability. So basically we set P this will be between 0 to 1. So the top words with cumulative probability less than 0 0.5 uh, get selected uh, for sampling. Okay, then top k means the total number of words. Now this top sequence, it is not entirely clear to me, but uh, it is required by these anthropic models. Uh, the documentation says uh, the LLM stop generating the text uh, once it see uh, this human. Okay. All right, so don't worry, you can uh, leave it uh, as it is the standard. We need to carefully work on only the prompt data so that our instructions are clear and we get uh, this bug free uh, code which we can run as it is. Okay, and then uh, we choose a model. So for this exercise, we are choosing this Cloud V2 model from Anthropic, and this is how we find out the model IDs. So here we are listing the foundation models. And these are the all the models, uh, the model IDs. Okay. All right. And then uh, we provide input output formats. Uh, so both accept and content type. These are uh, application uh, JSON. Uh, so standard. Uh, similar to how we invoke the SageMaker endpoints. Uh, here we are invoking this foundation models uh, endpoint. Okay. So using the bedrock runtime. Uh, remember earlier we have used bedrock client but this time we are using bedrock endpoint so here we have standard bedrock client and bedrock uh, runtime okay because we have enabled this runtime to be true uh, which would look like this bedrock runtime okay so we are invoking the endpoint using uh, the bedrock end time uh, runtime where is it yeah invoke the model so we need to supply uh, the payload which contains the prompt as well as the LLM parameters. Okay, then the model, and this is just the content type. Okay, all right. So if we want to use a different model, all we need to do is simply change the model ID, but do check different models accept different parameters. I mean, these five parameters are standard to all the models, right? We need to provide a prompt. Uh, we can set the maximum number of tokens and we can set the temperature top P and top K, okay? Uh, not all models have this uh, stop sequence. All right, that's it. We invoke the endpoint and we get, an, we get the response. Now, as with any uh, AWS SDKs, uh, the response, it's a, uh, it's a uh, dictionary. So here uh, we are parsing the dictionary and from the body, uh, we are getting uh, this completion. So this completion element uh, contains uh, the actual response generated, okay? So this is our response and here is our Python code, okay? Now what I did is I took this code and I simply run the code as it is. So I did not make any changes. I took the code as it is and run uh, in this cell below, okay? And we remember we have asked four questions 
we have asked total revenue for the year the product with highest revenue the date on which we have the highest revenue and this bar plot of monthly uh, sales versus the month right so it came up with these answers we will check in a minute if these are correct or not and here we have the revenue plot uh, over these five different months okay so the given data uh, it span over five months now rather than going over the code to make sure that the code is correct let's do let's compute these uh, by writing code so that we can verify if the answers are correct okay so here i am simply reading the pandas data frame so as we can see here it has four columns the date the product the price and the number of units sold now for each product and for a given date we need to know the revenue for that product right on that day so here we are simply computing the revenue by multiplying the product with the units uh, sold okay and then uh, the our first question total revenue for the year right because we have only one year uh, uh, all the data belonging to the same year so we can simply take uh, the sum value so this turns out to be 35,496 sorry 490 which is same as uh, this one okay so the total revenue is complete uh, computed correctly and then we want to find out the product with the highest revenue so the auto generated code uh, it says it's p003 now let's see so here we want to group by the product id right so we want this information at the product level uh, what we want is the total revenue for that year right the total revenue again because we have only one year data we don't need to worry about uh, filtering uh, to the uh, required year right so we are simply grouping by the product and then computing the sum of the revenue so we have only three products and here is the total revenue uh, for that year so as we can see from here the p003 has the highest revenue okay so which is uh, again correct p003 now this is the date uh, with the highest uh, revenue so it's the 23rd of april right so to do that again all we need to do is group by date and again compute the sum of the revenues so here we have date against the total revenue now if we look at 4th of april is indeed the month with the highest uh, revenue and finally we want to compute uh, compute the monthly revenue and then do the bar plot so in order to compute the monthly revenue we need to extract the month from the given date okay so here we are simply converting the date to date time timestamp and then uh, using this function we are extracting the month okay so here we have the month and then all we need to do is simply group by the month and compute the sum of the revenue for that month and do a bar plot okay so this is the plot which is exactly same as uh, this plot okay the aesthetics are slightly different but uh, it's exactly the same plot so it's great i mean we have simply provided our table schema and then we have provided what we want to compute and we gave uh, some more instructions right so the llm is able to generate the python code uh, which is able to read the csv file and do some metrics uh, as we uh, asked without any bugs or uh, uh, any changes to the code right so this is uh, great and in the next video we will generate some sql code uh, using com some complex uh, table schema and uh, uh, after that we will do uh, some code interpretation converting the code uh, between different languages uh, etc uh, that's all for this video uh, thank you very much